Ladies and saints, you look at these people around you, especially if you're successful, they will all betray you. You always have to have your own back because people out here are shaky as hell. Man, they shaky and deceitful. I can't tell you how many people around me that I see them coming with their, their mouths are like watering it. It's like I, I see the like hyenas. And you know, when I go through certain resorts, you know, there are people who greet me or know my name. And I'll give you an example. And I find this to be very annoying personally. At certain resorts, I might be in a particular lounge or I might be somewhere socializing. And the waitresses come through very frequently in, you know, like VIP sections. Vegas is a customer service city. I only drink water. That's it. And so usually I'll have them bring me a large bottle of ex whatever the most ex the best water that comes in glass is. And if I get up to go to the restroom or if I get up to go to my suite or if I get up to go do something, I come back and they'll like take my glass. And the reason that they'll take my glass or even if my bottle's not empty, they'll take it so that they can bring me another one, even though it's on the house, right? The waitress wants another tip. So they'll take a full bottle of water that's expensive so that they can come back and say, oh, do you need anything? Because they know I'm tipping really well. Like I, I'm sure the waitress staff has apparently told each other, oh, yeah, that guy, he'll give you like 25 bucks every time you bring him water. So they'll take it when I'm not around so they can bring me another one. And like I'll go to the bathroom and come back. I'm like, yo, where's my water at? And I know they took it on purpose because I left my briefcase there sitting to show that I'm still at this, this table. They, they take it. And like these are the kind of sl sly, underhanded things that people do to maneuver to get into your pockets and it's just like damn like that's that's crazy how like sick and deceitful human beings are and i could tell you a million stories like that and i think they don't think you're aware but i see what they're doing and in my head i'm like you know it's sad that you need 25 bucks that badly and i'll give it to you but i know who you are and i know how you are controlled and you know what? I, I got 25 bucks to give to you. I'll give it to you. But I know that you're a person to be paid for. Like, we, you'll never be my friend. We'll never be on good terms. We could never date. You'll, you'll always be some type of person that I know is a user and should be used. Huh? You're a user. Therefore, you should be used. You, I can't treat you like a human being. I can never allow you to have access to me because you, you will try to use me. You're not a good person. And sadly, so many people are like that. Class is important. If you're wealthy, you can really only have wealthy friends. Everyone else is going to be around trying to figure out how they could get wealthy, not how they can be your friend. They don't love you. They want to hang around and try to figure out like, oh, how can we collaborate on business? And you're like, damn, bro, like, I'm not here to discuss business. I'm just cooling, man. Like, we don't need to collaborate on business. Well, the reason I'm not thinking about collaborating on business is because my businesses are strong. I'm doing well. The reason you're trying to figure out how to collaborate on business, you ain't got no business. You're trying to make a dollar off of me. Not with me, but off of me. That's what's waiting for you guys. You hear a lot of these RP guys, a couple of them might have a couple bucks to rub together only because of YouTube. And then they want to tell you, oh, go get your money. Then you're going to get your women. Then you're going to get everything you want in life. No, it's not that simple. You really need to be shrewd out here. You need to be intelligent. And if you are to get money and you have a kind heart and you're not intelligent and you don't understand the book of dark truths, you're going to suffer greatly. There's so many wicked people. And even people who were previously good, your relationships uh, begin to be marked by money. I can't tell you how many women that I've understood to be simple women. And then they get deeper into my lifestyle and then all of a sudden they're not simple women anymore. All of a sudden, like regular things are not good enough anymore. What? What? Like what? I can't tell you how many women I have that have been on payroll or are on payroll who know every expensive thing you would ever want. They know the expensive luggage. They know the expensive bags, the expensive men's wallets, you know, the designer, this, the designer, that they can't even afford this stuff, but they know it. <laughs> how why well part of it is because they want to be able to recognize all the expensive things so if they see a guy and he pulls out a wallet and his wallet has this particular designer print they're like oh yeah that's goya i need to go meet that guy he has the bag huh or if they see another woman and they see her sandals and they're like oh those are hermes slip-ins oh i should become friends with her 
maybe she has a husband or a boyfriend or a sugar daddy who's rich and I can benefit from them. And this is a true story. For example, I had a, a young lady who's super trill, very nice young lady. The only problem is that she is, ha has a poverty mentality. She doesn't know how to support a boss. You heard me. And I remember I had to take a business meeting. So we were staying at the Wynn. And I had to, you know, take a, a series of meetings. And so I told her to go to the pool, have, you know, have some fun. I don't have time to have fun. Go to the pool, order yourself some food or drinks or whatever, get a cabana, whatever you want to do. Just charge it back to, to the room, have some fun. She goes to the pool. And it's an expensive resort. And uh, she's in the pool. There's another woman there who's you know, by herself and they start talking and she asks the other woman like, oh, you know, well, what are you doing here? And the woman says, oh, I'm with my, my man. He's a poker pro. But he plays poker professionally around the world. It's what he does for a living. And so he, he's in a poker tournament. So I'm just hanging out. And she's like, oh, well, my guy's in this business and he's taking a bunch of meetings. So he told me to like come hang out because he didn't have time. She said, oh, well, let's hang out together. She's like, oh, well, I have a cabana. And I was like, oh, great. Now I'll hang out with you. And then eventually, uh, you know, chick comes back and tells me about her day and tells me about this chick. And then eventually the chick says, oh, well, you know, my boyfriend's take. And by the way, her boyfriend is like 50 years old. So this girl that my chick met, this girl was like 22, 23, 24, something like this, early 20s. The guy she's dating is like 54. Like he's too old for me to hang out with. He damn sure is too old for her to hang out with. But this is life. So then he's going to Spain. I forget precisely what the reason was. And then this girl being deep in that lifestyle tells the chick I'm dealing with, she's like, oh, I'm going to Spain and he's going to be doing X, Y, and Z again. I'm just going to be by myself. Well, why don't you come? And my girl's like, uh, I, I, no, I don't know. And she's like, yeah, just come. He'll, he'll get you a ticket. Like any, if anyone wants to come like to hang out with me, like keep me company. Yeah. He would much rather you come. Like I'll, he can get you a ticket. And I'm just like, yo, this is a sick world. This is a truly sick world. She like this little gold digger feels comfortable spending her guy's money on other people. He doesn't even know. And he's in the position of being fleeced for his money. And so he'd rather pay for an extra ticket for a chick. He doesn't know just to know that his thought is not being railed by a random dude. That's the, that's the world. That's the world. So a lot of things you guys would never know about, get to see or experience. And, you know, truth be told you, even if you experience some of these things, you probably wouldn't even understand it. You wouldn't even be able to put together in your brain why the old dude is happy to pay for another girl to come hang out with his girl while he's not around, especially a girl that's respectable and conservative like mine was. But mine was like, I don't, I'm not going to accept that. Nah, he ain't paying for me. And then she's like, oh, well, like, do you? And she's like, she's like, he ain't paying for me. I can't afford it personally. And I wouldn't ask Marquette. So I'm going to just be where Marquette's at. Thanks, but no thanks. And they still talk, you know, they're friendly girls. But the fact is, like, that's the world that is ahead of you. If you are, you are to achieve financially, most of you won't achieve financially because you're not serious people. It's not because you're not smart, just because you're not a serious person. Very few people are actually serious. And then for those that do achieve and you're trying to achieve to financially, you're trying to achieve to get some of the things that you've heard in this red pill space. Uh, you want to get the girl, not realizing that the girl that you get after you have money is like the worst girl you could get. <laughs> it's the worst one. And even if you get a girl that isn't focused on money, if she's around money, she will change and adjust in a in a bad way. In a bad way. All of a sudden, she likes to be comfortable. But the definition of comfortable has changed radically. So that's the world. Um, not to say that things aren't better when you're successful. They for sure are. You heard me? Like they for sure are. I don't, I don't even sell this water. I just want it custom water because I reached out to a particular luxury water brand and they didn't want to do a deal. So I was like, well, I'd rather drink my own water than your water. So I, I pay overpriced amount to have my own water and I don't even sell it. These are the things that money can get you. But it's also really, for me, it's a, a matter of uh, morality and ethics and decency because so many YouTubers, rappers, entertainers, they promote alcohol brands because alcohol has an enormous profit margin. There's only so much you can sell water for, right? But alcohol, you could sell alcohol for a ton of money. 
even though it has no value and it's a poison. So you watch Club Shay Shay. He has his own spirits or liquor brand. Cameron has his own liquor. P. Diddy has his own liquor. Sean Carter has his own liquor. Rick Ross has their own liquor. Everybody has their own liquor. The Saint, water. What reward do you get for that? No reward. You see, and water, because it's a low-cost item, but it still has like the same weight as alcohol, you know, it's not really worth me shipping out. But say this was a bottle of alcohol. If it's a bottle of alcohol, I could charge you 30 bucks for it. So now it's expensive enough that I can ship it out to you and make money. But a bottle of water, most I would charge, what, like $3 for it. It's not expensive enough to ship out to you. So what reward do I get for being moral? No reward. So that doesn't pay. So you see a lot of people making like, you know, trying to be critical of Mr. Beast. They don't understand business. Mr. Beast is trying to get paid. He's serious about getting paid. You're not serious about getting paid. So you complain about him getting to the bag because you sit on your ass and you ain't trying to get to the bag. Me, I know other ways of getting to the bag. Now, if you use morality, is your bag going to be as big as somebody being immoral? Hell nah. Hell nah. Because it turns out that filth in crime has much higher profit margins. You see, you get better profit margins when you sell McDonald's food versus organic food you get more profit margins selling vapes and cigarettes versus like health products so you know that is just the truth of the world um i could never make a bunch of money selling sass and water as opposed if i was selling sass and vodka so there you go and also think about it like this stream i'm not roasting anyone i'm not cursing and yelling and being belligerent When's the last time someone sent in a super chat or support? Exactly. So don't be critical of people doing the wrong thing or doing something unethical or immoral until you first look in the mirror. You first look in the mirror and try to understand yourself and understand the fact that you are a part of what's fueling what is wrong in the world. Not saying all of you, some of you are saintly in nature, but many of you, you are a part of what is fueling what is wrong in the world. I'll give you one last note before I get out of here. I did a video, um, uh, an interview of a woman in South Africa, a woman who works as a prostitute. Uh, you can see that on this very channel, in fact. I think it has a little over 300,000 views last time I checked. And most of the persons in the comments are all South African. And they in the comments, they sound like such kind people. Oh, I want to help this woman. I want to support this woman. I want to do good for this woman. Why is the American interviewer laughing? He's so sarcastic. He doesn't care. I want to help her. And then I think, that's so funny that you say that. Because I, the American, went to your country. I've created many jobs in your country. You walk past this woman on a daily basis. Look at her like you are scummy little street worker. You never wanted to help her out. I give her a platform. Now she's a human to you, but before she was not a human. Now you want to help her out, but you, before you walk past her all the time, you know exactly where she is. You know exactly where you can find women like her. There's a multitude of them, but now all of a sudden you want to help her out because she's on a YouTube channel. You disgust me. And then you have the foolishness to say, oh, the American, he's laughing during the interview. I'm laughing because it's so damn sad, dummy. I'm laughing not to cry, dummy. The only reason I helped her because I looked at her and she reminded me of my mother. Same age, old black woman. Shouldn't be asking to sell her body to me. I put more money in her pocket than she can make in a span of a week selling her body. But I'm the bad guy says the imbeciles in the comments. That's the world we live in. You think people are the same as you because they're all black? Nonsense. You're a Pan-Africanist. No, you're a fool. How can you be a Pan-Africanist thinking you're a black American and people on the continent identify with you? They don't even identify with each other. Their Zulus speak the same language, have the same history and ancestry, and they walk by each other with no regard and no respect. And then they have the self-delusion to be in my comments like, oh, this is so sad. She's so smart. She has so much potential. I want to help her. You don't want to help her or else you would have done it. It would not have taken an American, a foreigner to come from across the world to put some money in her pocket. It wouldn't have taken me to come from the other side of the world to let her tell her story. It wouldn't have taken any of that. Then you see other dummies in the comments. Women. There was a time where I think... I forget if I had asked her, she just volunteered. She had named the neighborhood where she sells her body. 
And maybe I repeated it and I repeated it wrong. Maybe I said morning star and it's morning side or something like that. But there were some dummies in the comments that said, oh, it's not morning star, it's morning side. What does it matter, you fool? Are you trying to drive people into this business? Are you trying to tell men where to go to engage in this perversion? Are you trying to tell little girls where to go to become harlots? Why are you correcting that, you fool? And more importantly, if you really care so much, you know where this is going on. Why have you not gone there to help? Because you don't care. You talk your words, but you don't care. You are not a saint. You are of the wicked. You are an average person. You are a person who does not care. You're just lying. You see, the reason that I don't care if people think I'm a nice guy or this or that the reason I'm fine with, you know, flashing out on somebody and being aggressive is because if I don't care, I show you I don't care. I don't pretend with you. If I do care, I show you I care. But there's no pretend with me. Either I don't care or I do care. But the worst thing is that most of the world is fake. You got these South Africans in the comments so damn sympathetic, but they let their countrymen starve. <laughs> It's amazing. And then they're so self-absorbed and deluded that the one person that is helping, they criticize. Imagine, imagine I help the woman feed her kids. I help her skip a day of selling herself and giving up on her, giving her soul out to strangers. And you criticize me? Word? I should have your blood upon my hands for that. I should because you're not a valuable person. You're a fool and a deluded one at that.